evening. Right. Okay. Hi there, River. River Bradford. It's with Seth. Right, I did post the three little clips that she got they put out. I did post them. But then last night, or was it this morning? Can't remember. I saw that she posted the full version of the video of the interview. So I thought, right, well, I'm going to show that tonight then. So it's with Seth. So, but before we get there, there's a couple of other little things I want to look at first. So, and I will say now, one of the parts I'm looking at when I go there is, is trigger warning. So let me just put this up. Let me just put this up. Wow, hold on. Because I just want to show you the small clip of it, of this interview it did the other night, which I did show last night. But I just want to show this one little clip because I want to talk about the response that KP, KP Proudfoot, gave out today. But, but I'm just waiting for a few minutes before for everyone to come in. So. Hope you've all had a nice, had a nice, what day is it now? Friday. Oh yes, Friday. So you've, you've all finished from work. You've got the weekend to look forward to. Have you all done something nice this weekend? I'm not. Well, I am. But I'm not. Hi, Thomas. Lupins, 18. Good to see you being out. Um... So, I have got the interview, the first interview of the mother and stepfather, which I just want to show you that again, go through that as well. Because at the very beginning of that interview, there's a little, you've got to be really, I just saw it just by off the chance. And I just want to make sure I'm not seeing things. So, I was... As soon as I see it, I'll click, I'll stop it. But it's so quick, you could miss it. And I'm sure it's what they call Jupiter's, Jupiter's Delight. Katie does it. She gives this little smirk as she turns around to look at Chris. She gives this, she's got a tissue up at her eyes and she gives this little smirk on the side of her face. I think she thought the tissue was hiding it. You know what I mean? But it didn't. So we will be looking at that first interview. But I think it's always good to go over these interviews because sometimes when you see it once or twice, you pick up on things. But then when you go over it again, you think, oh my God, I missed that. Or did he really say that? I'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. She, he's crying for some reason. I don't know why. He always starts about, oh, it's a bit early for him. He normally starts about nine o'clock. Anyway, let's get on with this. So as you know, I don't know if you've all seen that interview he gave, Seth gave the other night with, um, just doing on TikTok. Well, it's on my live last night, and I only saw a clip of it on a Facebook page. 
I'm out of oh my god. So I said, please, who who was this interview with? And this the per this woman on the Facebook page sent me the link. And I sat and watched it before before I showed it on here. I sat and watched it. And I was just heartbroken, heartbroken. No other words for it. Disgusted. Right. So, as I said, we will be looking at the Nancy Grace interview with Seth Rogers. That, I think it was Wednesday night. Wednesday, you Johnny? Yeah. And, uh, but I want to show you the first interview first of the mother and father. So let's just sort this out. Right. So walk us through. Right. And you all know this interview. If you haven't seen this interview, where have you been? But I'm going to, oh God, can I get bigger? Yeah. So, right, that's all ready. And we're set to go. Just listen to this interview and I will stop it because it's very early in the interview. That Watch Katie's face. Watch Katie's face. Her lips. Just her lips. When she turns her head, when she goes to turn her head towards uh, Chris, watch her face. How would you describe the situation right now? How are you coping? <laughs> um, <laughs> We're on a constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hope. Right, I'll go back again because you got to be really quick at this. How Just watch her face. The situation right watch now. her face. <laughs> Um, we're on a constant roller coaster ride. I missed it then. Sorry, I know I'm repeating it, but I just want you to see her face. How would you describe the situation right now? How are you coping? <laughs> um, Did you see that that smirk she gives? I'm all seeing things. Hi, MG. That's okay, MG. I know you're busy. Right? Did you see that smirk? Am I am I seeing things or once more, please? Someone back me up on this. I'm not. I'm not just imagining you describe the situation right now. How are you coping? <laughs> um, <laughs> See, she, she gives that smirk, does she not? She gives a flipping smirk. Someone said, how is your coping? I won't be doing a smirk or anything. I've been bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jupiter's Jeep, delight. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think she deserves that, MG. I don't think she deserves that. She deserves so what we call in the UK Pandora bracelets, but 
they are actually handcuffed. So whenever we see anyone getting handcuffed, we say, oh, they're getting a Pandora bracelet. Right? <laughs> she deserves her Pandora bracelet. So, hang on, I'm going to let this one a bit more because there is more in here I want to say. Again, to refresh my memory. We're on a constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless and many other emotions all in one, and it's a never ending roller coaster. It doesn't stop. It won't stop until he walks through the door. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Not at any rate. I know we're about keeping hope alive. I'm sure that's in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. He's gonna Always. Come home. He's going to walk through that door. <laughs> and this street will be. Why does he laugh about that? That's always got me as well when he laughs about that. What's so funny about this situation, Chris? Please. What is so flipping funny? Oh, I hate this guy. I hate him. Flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug and love him. And that boy's gonna have more friends than he knows what to do with <laughs> when he comes home. So. so here we are, eight days now searching for him. Walk us through that Sunday night that he went missing. So walk us through. We've got so many people who really want to know, okay, how did this happen? So kind of just walk us through that night. Um, we were out and about that day. We were having a really good weekend. Um, we got home. Uh, everything was pretty normal. He was playing in his room. Um, when I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> um, he said, good night, mom, I love you. Um, said good night to his puppies. A um, little bit later, I wound up going to bed. And um, when I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. Right. I shared my views today in a comment on a Facebook page. Right. You know, just, you know how... Chris said he hadn't been there since beginning of February, right? He'd been going at work. He wasn't even coming home on the weekends, which everyone thought strange, yeah? I think that incident with the bout where child CPS or DCFS, whatever it is, was called in was told he was told he wasn't allowed in the family home while the case was ongoing right and i think katie was got, getting annoyed with sebastian about that because she couldn't be with her partner in the week you know what i mean and her little sidekick and i think something I think maybe an argument occurred Sunday evening when they got back from that restaurant and something happened in that house. And that three hour phone call she had was them trying to figure out what to do. You know what I mean? And being as they've not searched the landfill where the everyday rubbish would go, which is a big mistake, they should have done that. That should have been done. When they got the warrant for that other landfill in Kentucky, they should have got a warrant for the one in where that locally. To them and doing a search there as well but they haven't 
They haven't done research on that one. Or unless they have, but they're not said anything. You know what I mean? So, I seriously think perhaps he did get back home. Perhaps it was Sebastian. But then again, if Sebastian took the rubbish out on the Sunday night, the dogs would have picked his scent up. I was watching um, a YouTube today and it's about, he's a diver, he dives, he goes in water and dives, right? And there's two of them. But the one guy, he's got a dog which he has trained himself for scent and I think he said it's more of a cadaver dog which smells decomposing bodies and he's trained his dog with decomposing bodies so he's obviously had to take him to a site where there's nobody's uh, side to have for testing the decay of certain bodies in certain temperatures and all that lot. he's obviously had to get permission to use one of their salts to train his dog because how else is he going to train his dog for decomposing bodies right and this guy and this other lad diver are going down tomorrow right they're going to be down in tennessee tomorrow so we're going to have a lot of footage tomorrow and Sunday, a lot is happening down there this weekend, and they're going to be out there on the boats. Then the dog is explaining how dogs can pick up a scent of a a body in the water, and he said when a body is in the water, it decomposes, right? And it gives off the body sort of like goes to um, liquid. Yeah, and the oils from the body comes to the surface and gathers on the edge of the river, right around the river. And that's what the dog smells, is the, the, the oils on the top of the water. You can't see it, but they can smell it. Right, so that's what his, his dog is trying to do as well. And he's going to be down there tomorrow. With his dog and his boats everything and so is this other guy gonna be down there with his boats and the reason he got a dog and trained himself was because apparently there's an incident where a child had gone missing in his area from if i heard it right and it took him something like eight hours or something or more to get these dogs there and he said to his wife he said i'm sorry we've got two youngsters he said i'm not waiting eight eight hours for them to bring dogs in i'll have my own dog i'll train it myself so if any, my kids go missing my dog is there straight away i can take him out and he will find them he will find that child and that's why he got this dog for and but i can't remember the breed of the dog he said it's like a a german shepherd but a, it looks like a german shepherd but it's it's different it hasn't got the like german shepherd has these um defects on the back legs where the back legs can go on them this dog hasn't got that in them that won't happen to these dogs and they're very good at tracking missing people so let's continue it's not very long really this one it's only about um, five minutes so in your mind that's usually around what time six when do you normally wake up around six o'clock so were you instantly thinking something's wrong or were you like he may just be 
already in the shower. I took, took a second. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about. But you have to walk through the kitchen from your bedroom to get to pardon me. You have to walk through the kitchen, I believe. And from the kitchen, you can either go into the dining area or into the lounge through to get to his bedroom. So you have to go past the kitchen somewhere, love. So would you not have seen him in the kitchen if he was in there? Three minutes in, give or take. I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um, he said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. And so at that point, is that when you call 911 or what's going through your mind? She, while we were on the phone and I was, I was like, is he on the other side of the bed? We, the normal places he may be in the house, you know, and he wasn't. So I was like, okay, well, hold on a minute. And immediately after that, we called the sheriff's department and made the report. I ran and, all over the house, outside, inside. I looked in every closet. When minutes they were here. They responded within minutes and here we go. So you said you were on the phone with her. So yes, you were not home. No, ma'am. Okay. I was I was at work. I'm a tower crane operator and I was working in Memphis at the St. Jude Project. So it's, you know, I have an earpiece in that talks to my phone. I have another earpiece in that does the radios. So when she was talking to me, it was like, what? I was confused. We talked about where he could possibly be. And then we went from there and led to calling the cops. And here we are now. And within minutes, there they are at the home. Yes, ma'am. It was rapid fire. They had cars. They, they had cars from here down to the, to the main road, road, as far as I could tell. So what's going through both of your minds? I mean, are we panicking? Is it this, oh, I think he's probably at a neighbor's house or what are you thinking? My son doesn't run, he's not a runner. He's never run away before. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not, he's not a mischievous child by any means. Um, but there's answers to questions that have no answers, you know, or questions, excuse me, questions with no answers right now that we are searching for desperately. And we just don't have that. Oh, I'm going to stop this. Hi, I'm Carol Sullivan, oh. inviting you on a holiday vacation oh. Join me in enchanting Ireland. September the 11th. God, sorry. Right, so that was the very first interview they ever did. And I'm glad you seen that, MG, because I thought I was seeing things. But she did it. She did give that smirk, smile. Okay. Really? But there's a couple of points, right? She said he walked out that door, right? Now, from what I can tell by the setup of their house, right? Her bed, their bedroom is on the, as you go in their house, their bedroom will be on the left hand side at the back of the house, right? Sebastian's would be on the right hand side at the front of the house. Well, she said the door was locked. In the other interview, she just said the door was locked. All right, so why would he I, walk out the door and lock it behind him? With no shoes on. I'm sorry, but I think the police really need to, the law enforcement then really need to start looking at these interviews and thinking, 
Tem aqui uma águia no pé. You know what I mean? Something is not adding up. Right? There's no scent of him anywhere around that house. Yet they say there was. Nancy Grace caught him out on that. She called him out, called him out on that. Right in her interview, she did with him. And that's probably why he turned around in the end and said he, he couldn't do the uh pol what is it? the polygraph uh whatever the lie detector test <laughs> because TBI told him not to what no well there's this other interview I want you to now this is where the trigger warning is okay. And I only want to replay it because it coincides with something I'm going to read. I'm only replaying this bit of the clip of this video because of what she put out today, okay? So please, if you don't want to listen to this part of the video, I understand. Walk away. Do something, okay? It's a matter of, I think it's about... Five, four or five minutes all together. So let's go. Hold on, hold on, I haven't got it, it's seven hours. Hold on, I haven't got it, it's showing. See me. That's a bit silly. Couldn't look like it was. Right, hold on, I'll just go back a, a little bit there. It just sometimes happens, and I think that that's what he got caught up in, and I truly do believe. Before we kind of go on, so the first one is, uh, so how he, how is he with strangers? California. Uh, just to hang on. She has a habit of not checking on her kid. I would never let some kid that's five years older than my son play with my my son anyways. It's like, why do you want to play with my son? There's a five-year difference. That's a pretty big difference. You're 13, and my son, you're, you're a teenager. My son is not a teenager. He He's still playing with those and Legos and, you know, he's building things. He's playing video games, and you're a teenager. You go out and you have your own, you know, age appropriate group that you play with. And they were letting this kid play with my son and they weren't checking on him. And then this kid took sense and he molested him. So you take your time. And there was nothing I could do in California because the kid was 13. But they let that happen. And they didn't bother to try to even get my son help until last year. Here, my son has just turned 15 in December. It means he's been dealing with an emotional, stressful, traumatic incident for the last seven years. And 
I've been trying to help him. I've been trying to get him help. Right. Yeah. You just heard what he said, right? Well, today, the mother of the year, which I don't think she should have that title. Right. Um, come out with, uh, where is it now? I've got it somewhere. I think it's in my emails. I think I sent it to my emails, yes. I can share. Oh, my mouse is doing a ballerina dancing around the screen. It's on the screen, and she she come back, and I don't know how many of you have read this or seen this today. It's been on certain Facebooks and a lot of um, other YouTubers have spoke about this today, but uh, because I think she came came out must have been while I was in asleep. <laughs> when she, this was put out so I'll read it slowly as I can because I don't think my thing my translator thing will do it up here no 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 sorry <laughs> anyway let's just start Katie Proudfoot. That child was not 13, and we did not allow my son to be abused. Hmm. I don't care if that child was four, five, six, eleven. I don't care about his age. We contacted all authorities. My son received all the available help he could get. Multiple therapists involved. His doctor did know because he went to the doctor and got checked immediately. Seth was involved in his therapy as well. There were so many lies in, in this story, including him failing to mention where Seth got banged from the base for his violent tendencies. Well, as one YouTuber put it out today, what does violent tendencies to mean a lot of different things? You know what I mean? Did you shout a lot? Because that can be seen as being violent if he shouts at you at a person a lot. You know what I mean? It's a, 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 a large rat area it can cover. So she tends to throw out these little things of that. She'll try violent tendencies, but she won't explain what she means by that. Right? Um, including in failing to mention where Seth got banned from the base for his violent tendencies, where at the time my son was seeing a psychiatrist and a psychologist to help him with his trauma from Seth's abuse Yes, and the trauma from being assaulted by this child. Right? Let me be clear. Who says that? Who else do we know who says that? Let me be clear. Right? Be giveaway there. I think it is sickening that this man is airing 
Morrison's trauma on Lori. And hold on, you add the fact that he, your son had degressed, degressed, or good degressed, whatever the word is now, back to where he was having trouble sleeping on the night time and was having to have pull ups on, like adult pull ups. Well, I've digressed, that's it, digressed. Right? Now, that to me is a sign when a child, any child being autistic or not, if a child is sleeping through the night and not having any troubles with toileting, but then all of a sudden you start not sleeping, having trouble, and having accident, then there's something has happened in his life. Right? Let me be clear. I think it's sickening that this man is airing my son's trauma online. True. My son deserves better than that. Yep, he deserves better than you. When we find him, open bracket, and I believe in my heart he will, close bracket, the truth will come out. Now, who else says that? The truth will come out. He's doing his best to slander us as parents, but my son is loved and cared for and always will be. Who else said that in an interview? Just, he's loved and he's cared for. Public opinion, public opinion based on lies, assumptions, half-truths, is rampant because of th things like this, which has nothing to do with finding Sebastian. It probably doesn't. But it shows us what he was, what sort of parents he was living with. I will not stoop so low as to partake in the back and forth argument with him. Uh, so what are you doing here? God knows the truth. And that's the only truthful thing she said. Someone else said it as well. God knows the truth. That's the only honest thing she said because God knows the truth. She doesn't. And the truth always comes out. Please stop the madness and focus on finding Sebastian. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to have to. That is the most important thing. Wow, well, I'm gobsmacked. I'm just gobsmacked by that. Right? She's the one who goes online to that, says that he's regressed and he's having, having toilet and problems. Well, I'm sure everyone wanted to know that, and I'm sure he'll be happy to know that you just blasted that all over the internet, love. Right? And you're the one whose partner sat there and said he used the belt on your son. I'm sure that would have uh, Sebastian as well, knowing that everyone knows that he's gone through that. So just because the father has spoken out at last, at last, he's spoken out, you don't like it. Well, I'm sorry, but this father has got one hell of an army behind him. Sebastian's army. And anyone comes out for that, comes, goes for that guy, you've got to get past everyone else first before it gets to him. You know what I mean? If you stood at the search party and someone stood there and said something bad about Seth, I'm sorry, but I think that person had better have a body armor on. Because the searchers are going to go for that person. Before Seth even easy. 
too many people now protecting Seth, and that's what he needs. He needs he needs people to protect him from this BS that you two have put out there. He needs to be able to sleep. He needs to be able to sit down and eat a proper meal. Not like you two where you go out for meals and you sleep all oh, just just pretty, don't you, on the night times. Because you've now upped and moved out your family home and gone down to Mississippi. Rumour is you're putting it up for sale. But it hasn't gone up for sale yet, everyone. It isn't up for sale. Believe me, when it does, we'll find out. And you're the one who sat there in that first interview and said that we can't wait for him to come through those doors. Right? How's he going to get through those flipping doors now? When you have well and truly bolted them. You bolted the doors and left, left Dodge City. Why did you leave? Was your neighbours getting at you as well? Did they not like the fact that you, you're you hiding something? Right? So, it just gets me mad when she come out. And I'll tell you now. Please agree with me. If you're on Twitter, leave me a comment. On YouTube, come and say hello and leave me a comment. Uh, please, how can she sit there and say Sebastian is the most, what was it she put? Please stop the madness and focus on finding Sebastian. Uh, we are, what are you doing? What are you doing, Katie? Because I also heard that where you are, right, now, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, did you not say that the first time you went down Mississippi was to put leaflets out and uh, flyers out? Because your son could be anywhere. Well, why is it people down there didn't know about your son going missing? Tell me that, Katie. Please, get one of your family members to come on my channel and come on my chat and tell me why are you not looking for your son? Why is it people down where you are have said they knew nothing about Sebastian going missing? Nothing. But you're apparently putting flyers out. But they know nothing. Because all you do all day is while he's up in that big crane and don't even ask me what is going through my head when I see him sitting in that crane because it's not nice what is going through my head right now. While he's sitting up in that big crane, what are you doing? Oh, you're scrolling YouTube and Facebook pages, aren't you? Yeah, you're very busy, aren't you, Katie? Get your backside up off this chair. Get out on the streets. Start pounding them pathways and hitting every shop, every restaurant. Leave flyers at the takeout places so they can be delivered with takeaway orders. Ping them on billboards, you name it. Get your backside up and get moving. Hold on, my cat's crying, I don't know if it's in the toilet. Oh, yeah. oh. Could you my bathroom door banging? It's my cat in the bathroom. I shut my cat in the bathroom. <laughs> right, so anyway, Katie, please. There's probably people on Twitter watching this. I don't know. But you've got your spies everywhere, haven't you? I've seen a couple of them on the Facebook pages. 
right? And one put a comment out today, and I think that woman regretted putting this comment out because she got slayed. She literally got slayed because she said Seth, something about Seth. Seth is out there. He's pounding the streets. He's pounding the woods. He's doing everything. He's arranging searches. He's doing interviews to get his son's name and picture out there. But when you do interviews, what do you talk about? Oh, yeah. Me, 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 me. How you're being think, uh, victimized online. And all that. Can you hear my cats in the background? They're talking to each other. Right? You're being victimized. That's all you talk about when you do a live. I noticed on Nancy Grace, she was very, very placid. But we all know what you and Chris are like. So I hope you do get to see this video, Katie and Chris. Because I've got no time for you. You've got no time for Sebastian, so I've got no time for you. And you think you're having a go at Seth because he spoke out for one. Oh, and believe me, I think the grandmother has got a lot more to say. A lot more to say. And I'd love her to speak out more. I really would. Because for the police saying there's no, there may not be any evidence of foul play, but no way did that lad walk out of that house. He was carried out, or he didn't, or perhaps he didn't even make it back to that house. One way or the other, he did not walk out of that house. And I think the police need to look at that and go, well, something happened then. If that, there's no scent by any of the dogs. No cars in the area. Right? And all the cars that were in the area, we've checked them out. Then how did Sebastian leave the house? And I hope to God they are doing this. I really do. Because this, this lad deserves more than what he's, you know what I mean? Yes, I've just done a big two-day search again over an area where they've already searched, which I'd like to see. But oh, God, there's that picture. There's his picture gone. I'd rather have that up. <laughs> I'm glad to see that the past couple of days. But I, I seriously think it's going to be stopped like it was in the first place. I think they could have carried on with the searches as well as doing the investigation of it as well. They should have kept on with the searching. Even if it meant going six miles, seven miles, eight miles, nine miles, ten miles. They should have kept those searches going. Anyway, that is all I have to say about that, Katie, because that wasn't your writing. This, not you. How do I know that? Well, let's just look at this. Let me be clear. Yep, we know who says that. What else? Where else was it? Um, oh, yes. God knows the truth. Who else has said that? And there's some else here as well that caught my attention, which I knew was from CP. CP. The truth will come out. It will come out, Chris. It will come out. 
and it's coming out slowly, but we're getting there. We all knew Seth was holding back on something. We all knew it. And you played him in your hand. You sat there and lied after lied after interview after interview after interview. Now, if I was a detective and you gave your statement to me, right, and then a couple of days later you added something when I'm an interview, added to that statement. They're going, hold on, she didn't say that in a statement. And then on the next interview, hold on, she's added even more. And then on another interview, what? The story is changing. If you tell the truth, the story doesn't change. You, when you lie, you add to it to have to, so that in your warped little minds, you think, oh well, if we add to it, if we say this and this, they're gonna believe us. But we don't. We don't believe. If you could just stuck to your story from day one, what you said in that first interview, right? Without adding on uh, how you met up with the niece, how you met up with these two aunts, how you went to this place and then to this place and then to for dinner, and what else was he? Uh, how you come home and he said, love you puppies, love you mum, to reinforce the fact that you're doing a good job because he said, I love you mum. No. Didn't pull the wool over my eyes the first time. He's not pulling the wool over my eyes now. So anyway. I find the Nancy. Right, here it is. This was released 21 hours ago, the video. Because while I was on a live last night, you could say. So it's last night after I come off my live, I've seen this. I thought, oh, sugar. I'm doing it again. You know what I mean? So we're going to watch this now. How long is it? No. It's about 40 minutes long. Right? But we won't be, I'll skip it on the adverts and things like that. But this one, you get to hear what the people on the panel say as well. Which I like to hear that. The search has been launched for missing autistic boy, Sebastian Rogers. Why? Why is there a new search re-canvassing areas that have already been searched? Could it have anything to do with the fact that Sebastian's glasses may have been found? And right now, controversy swirling about a polygraph. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories. Right now, but I do know this. I don't need an expert to tell me that there has been an alert that went out to media. A new search is taking place right now as we speak for Sebastian Rod. Rogers, the missing autistic boy. What does that mean? Is there new information that has not been released to us? Has a location been identified that is more important than other locations? This is unusual for a research an area that may have already been searched. What precipitated the new search? This, as we learn, glasses, eyeglasses have been found. Are they Sebastians? First of all, on the new search, joining me, Lauren Conlon, investigative reporter and host of The Outlaw. Can I just say, before we go any further, the glasses are being cleared of being anything to do with Sebastian. 
But it's interesting to hear where those found and who buy. Liar. Lauren, thank you for being with us. I understand that a new search has just been launched. Who, what, where, when, why? Tell me. Yes. So as you said, Nancy, it's in Hendersonville and it's the same areas and it's sheriffs in Sumner County and counties all over and it, it's EMS workers and it's more volunteers and the I believe it is the uh, uh, Sumner County EMS is saying six to ten miles and uh, and so on so this happened this morning this is breaking news they are saying this is has nothing to do with the press conference yesterday with the glasses found but that is all we know guys when you hear Lauren Conlon, who's been on the case from the very beginning of missing autistic boy Sebastian Rogers, when you hear her say volunteers, there's a caveat to that. They are law enforcement, EAs, people in the criminal law business, all banding together for a new search. This, as we learn, that glasses have been found, glasses found. That could be very significant. And joining me is someone who is acutely aware of all the facts surrounding that pair of glasses. Seth Rogers is with us. Uh, Seth is Sebastian's biological father. And you may have gone online and seen Seth. At first you see nothing but densely forested woodland. And then you realize it's Seth Rogers out there on foot looking for his son. He hasn't quit. He took a brief respite over Easter break, and now he's back at it. Seth Rogers, thank you for being with us. You can find him at Sebastian Strong. Seth, tell me about the discovery of the glasses. I know he had a brief rest over the Easter break. Do you really think he got any rest? No. My volunteers found them in Gallatin at around 210 Hutt Street on Monday. Seth, uh, no offense, but you're speaking Greek to me. Okay. Where is that? Where is that in relation to Sebastian's home where he was living with his mother, Miss Proudfoot? About, what? It's about 14 miles from uh, his mom's residence. It's not in Hendersonville. Now, Seth Rogers, you were telling me it's about 14 miles that Sebastian shared with his mother and his stepfather, the Proudfoots. Had he recently gotten new glasses or am I seeing, Seth Rogers, his actual glasses? They were close enough that I, I asked the Sumner County to, to bag and tag them. I mean... When I saw them through the pictures from my volunteers and they couldn't get a hold of anybody, I flagged down a deputy sheriff and I told them to put on some gloves, put them in a bag, and bring them in. And that's what they did. They took pictures around the area to show where they were laying and how they were laying on the street. So they would have some type of regulation on where they were placed or left or left at or however they needed and they brought them into our volunteer where our volunteers gather every morning and chain of evidence was completed and they took them in guys joining us is sebastian's biological father seth rogers seth i want to circle back to what you said these glasses were found about 14 miles from where Sebastian resided with his mother and stepfather. A volunteer found them. Were you on the search when the volunteer found them? I was not with the group. Not with that group. Where then were, were, were the glasses out in a forested area? Were they, I heard you mention the street. The, were they thrown by the side of the street? They were on the side of the road. Is it in paved? a residential area? Mm -hmm. So, okay. You just clarified something for me. It's in a residential area, like a cul-de-sac?
Rồi. Có câu cho anh chị. I am saving here. Right? And the reason I'm saving it you is because that's where the glasses were found. And okay, they said they're not connected to Sebastian. It's a little bit too close for comfort for my liking because round about here, right, is where Chris Proudfoot's mother and stepfather, stepfather live. Right round here, somewhere round here. I don't know where about. I know when I seen the map, it was marked the. The spot was marked past this road, so you had to go past this road. So it can only be that one, that one, this one, or that one. Right, I don't know if there's anything else up there. But I know it's marked up right about one of these two houses. Now that's a bit too close for for coincidence. And I said yesterday, when I was, well, well not yesterday, every day, I said, could they be like a decoy? Just a pair of glasses just around there, which are very similar to what Sebastian wore. But then why would they jump on there when they live up there? If you go and jump anything, you're going to jump it away, well away from your home, aren't you? So. I don't know. Anyway. Let's continue watching you. It's not always as simple as it, it sounds to go 14 miles. It could take 14 minutes. It could take an hour if you have to go over a hill to get there. But long story short, he's telling us about 15 minutes from home. Do you believe Sebastian has ever walked through this area? I have no idea. I don't even. Do I believe he even walked there? No, I don't. Because there's no scent of him outside of the house. We know what's in the area. I wonder if he had any friends there, but you believe these glasses are similar enough to the glasses we're seeing that you asked for them to be bagged. Were they cracked? Were they broken in any way? No, ma'am. They had some scratch marks on the inside of the nose piece. And that was it. The lenses weren't scratched. There was no scuff marks on the outside of them. Guys, you are hearing Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's bio dad speaking about a discovery this weekend. A discovery regarding Sebastian's glasses now. The reality is, it is a simple matter to determine if these are really his. Seth is telling us they look enough like them that they could very well be his and they've been taken into evidence. To make sure, what we do is take the lens out and compare it to his last diagnosis and his last lens prescription to find out, are these really Sebastian's glasses? And if so, why were they there? Also, we're going to be looking for prints. We're going to be looking for any DNA at all on these glasses. What, if anything, can they, they tell us? Back to Lauren Conlon, guys. Right now, as we are speaking, a new search is underway for Sebastian. Lauren Conlon joining us from the outlier. Lauren, any idea what caused, what sparked a new search? I, I think people at this point, and obviously Seth Rogers included, are so worried and so concerned, especially after hearing the glasses. So I personally think this also has to do with the Cajun Navy last week saying, okay, we're going to step back. We're going to regroup. We're not going to stop. Uh, and so in turn, I think more people, more organizations stepped up to help. Right. And, and sorry, go ahead. Um, this is. I am so bottom line, beyond... we don't know. Maybe the glasses, maybe the fact the Cajun Army, the Cajun Navy is stepping back, but we know the search is happening right now and we know where the search is. It's an 
Well, I want to know why the Ka- Na- United Cajun Navy haven't told TBI their findings and what they believe. Because I'm sure if they gave them their findings and it was on federal land, TBI will be able to go on and see if they're right or not, see if he's there area that has already been searched which i find very very intriguing why are they researching a particular area guys in addition to lauren collin and seth rogers joining us is dave mack crimeonline.com investigative reporter who has also been on the disappearance of sebastian rogers from the very very beginning dave mack um let me just say at the outset Recently, the stepfather, Mr. Proudfoot, stated that he would take a polygraph if we set (coughs) it up. As a matter of fact, uh, take a listen to this. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. Well, your whereabouts, Chris, right? Well, down in Mississippi, am I correct? Yes. Uh, from what I've heard and understand, they don't work on the weekends. Some do some don't some construction dog do some don't right but they don't work during the night how do i know that because mr cp jlr went to your works place and was walking down the road past it on the night time and there's no work going on. Not on the night time. So, even if you was working Sunday daytime, you still had Sunday evening. So, did anyone see you around your five-wheeler? Did you speak to anyone? Can anyone confirm that you was there? Is there cameras, video recordings? security cameras, anything to say you was in that five-wheeler all night. Because we know that you could have phoned her at nine o'clock, right? And then Mike left your phone in the five-wheeler, drove up there, parked your car somewhere else. Because, and then did what you had to do, and then drive back. Because it was Katie that ended the call. So as soon as she ends the call, it ends the call on your end as well. So have you got, have they got security cameras footage of you being in and around your five-wheeler Sunday evening, Monday morning? early hours of Monday morning. Have that? Because, say, I was in uh, Mississippi, I was working. Yeah, you, you worked, could say, yeah, he was here. But what about when you weren't there? Have you got any proof? Have you? A little bit of proof for them to say you don't need to take a lie detector. Because if I was a detective and I'll be going, well, yeah, we do need to, to take a log detector because a polygraph, I should say. Because we've got no evidence that you actually in Mississippi on Sunday night, early hours of Monday morning. So, yes. Oh, God, my cats are going mental now. Right? So, um, I think. You've got every right not to take a polygraph. And I understood from what I heard as well, 
um, a YouTuber that you was not happy that Kate took one. Anyway, we'll just get back to that, shall we? I understand. Miss Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. Okay, now, now listen to this. He says, I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph. I was told did. directly by law enforcement but because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. Listen to more. Did. And Mr. Proudfoot, you have volunteered to take a poly? Yes, ma'am. If, if I were to set Liar. up a poly for you, would you take it? Name the place and time, ma'am. I'll be there. Well, we did. We did that. We set up a polygrapher, a very well-respected polygrapher, a place and a time. Um, Mr. Proudfoot tells us that he has been instructed by the TBI not to be on with us today and ask for help finding his son, his stepson, and not to take a polygraph. Now, what agency... Law enforcement agency, TBI, FBI, any of them. What agency is going to tell you not to go and do on a podcast or anything like that or an interview with a news real agency to get Sebastian's name and picture out there? They're not. They're telling us. Keep putting the flies out. Keep getting them flies out. Get his name out there. Get his picture out there. So I can't see him saying, you know, do not do another interview on Nancy Grace and do not take a polygraph. I can't see that happening. Liar. I, I never heard of that. I always loved it when witnesses, targets, or defendants anybody would take a polygraph. If I want my own polygraph, I will get one as an assistant district attorney. So I find that very curious that he would be dissuaded from asking for the help from the public as we see a volunteer search launching right now with law enforcement and not to take a polygraph. Now, very curious. Dave Mack, didn't Mr. Proudfoot, Chris Proudfoot, Sebastian Rogers' stepfather, didn't he tell us he would take the polygraph anywhere, anytime? Isn't that true? Yep. He said it. Anywhere, okay. you name the place, I'll okay. be there. He also told us, should I believe him or my lion ears, that he has never taken a polygraph before? Didn't he tell us that? That's what he said. He told you that. Okay. Dave Mack, uh, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter, did he not tell another outlet he had already taken a polygraph and passed it? Yep, he sure did. He exact words. Explain. He said, somebody please. asked. He did interviews. He did a number of interviews, Nancy. When uh, and in this one particular, asked about have you taken a polygraph? He said somebody asked the question. This is a direct quote: Was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes, I didn't specify who or when, but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed, so I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took one. Exact words. That's what he said. Exactly. Okay, but Seth Rogers, this is Sebastian's dad, his bio dad. Sebastian, uh, Seth, I don't understand that because he told me he would take a polygraph if I set it up. I set it up. I went through a lot of hoops to get it set up. One convenient to him in the area where he says he's working. Then he wouldn't take it and blames the TBI. So now I find out he's told other outlets he's taken one and passed. Do you know the truth? I don't. I really don't know. But I'll tell you what, I volunteered to take polygraph i was told that i wasn't i didn't need to because they have my location and whereabouts but i still volunteered and if somebody wants me to because you got they've got your clocking when you clocked in they've got you on video 
at work in the garage as they call it right they've got you on video going about your place of work they've got you covered from that sunday when you went to work at you went in a bit earlier than usual than what you normally do. You went in at 6 p.m., I believe he said, or 6 30, and he started at 7. So he went in, he's on camera. They've got him step by step, right until he clocked out again and walked out to his car. So they know where he was. To take one, that's something of my own free will. I haven't been told by TBI that I can't take one. I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a belt. What happened? Uh, that was actually several years ago. Um, and Liar. Liar. Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot. Mr. Mm -hmm. Proudfoot, what happened? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were asking me, Katie. Um, Sebastian had gotten in trouble. He got caught, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a swat with a belt on his buttocks on the outside of his clothes. One swat. Okay. Um, one swat on the rear end with a belt. Okay. So that's one time he done it, right? One time, right? What about the time when he swatted him with the belt for not having a belt on? And that's when Sebastian went on the way to school. And that's when Sebastian told his teachers about it at school. And the DCFS worker come out that night while they was having dinner. That's two times to our knowledge. But listen to what he says. Hey, listen to more. Was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt? Yes, ma'am. The one and only time, actually. BS. When was this? Uh, years ago, ma'am. Any idea how many? Three, ten, one. Uh, it, it probably at least three years ago. I don't understand. Right? He laughed again about that. And he said three years ago. They've only been married two years. So he's disciplining a child that isn't even his stepson. You know what I mean? So... It'd be six foot under if you took any ch child of mine. Understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint? How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS uh, service call. But didn't it? I, I, I've got a lot of things I need to dissect very quickly. Dave Mack, you and I have been scouring the internet. Um, and, and speaking to various witnesses, Mr. Proudfoot tells me to my face that he hit Sebastian with the belt. This is an autistic boy. An autistic boy. Do they, at, at his level of severity of autism. We knew she'd go for him. We knew she would find the evidence out. And she would go for CP. We knew it. Because on that first interview, she was making notes. Right? She was getting all the information she needed. So then she could do the research and follow up on that information. And I, I've got an expert, uh, Courtney Lasky, is going to explain this to me. I did not teach this in law school. How would that affect a child with autism? But but that said, I want to focus on what I'm hearing, Dave. Matt, help me, Dave. Uh, I'm hearing that it happened years ago. In both of those quotes where you heard Chris Proudfoot speaking, he said 
several years ago. Then he says, when I press him on that, he says, at least three years ago. However, he stated a different scenario to a different person. Yes. Explain, Dave Mack. He did a uh, YouTube interview, and in that interview, he described the actual belt whack. And, you know, in your interview, he said that the belt whack did not lead to a CPS call. However, no, in this uh, other uh, interview... Uh, 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 no, stop. Uh, I asked you about the age of Sebastian when Sebastian was hit with the belt. One thing at a time, brother. The age described. of Sebastian. He said it was th three years ago. He said in another interview that the 15-year-old boy was upset. He was in trouble. He said he's 15 and in trouble. He was describing why uh, Sebastian was mad about the punishment, the whack. And he said, 15-year-old boy, punishment. Now, that's not three years ago. That's within the last 12 months. That is within the same year that Sebastian goes missing that also, is a like significant Dad, your, point and in your interview katie agreed with him she was saying yeah at least three years he's 15 on the i think he said the father said 7th of december this incident that i'm talking about i think happened in january and i think that is why like i said why chris wasn't in the family home on the weekends. I can understand him staying down there during the week, Monday to Friday. But we couldn't understand why he didn't come home on the weekends. Right? And this is why. Because I think there was an open case, a child DCFS case or whatever it is, and while there's an open case, he wasn't allowed in the family home. Yes, she did. You're right. Birthday You're absolutely December's right. What, what, what? What's that? His birthday is December 7th. He just turned 15. Okay. The significance of that is that he had not been 15 that long long according to this when he got whacked with the belt so does it matter when he got whacked with the belt to me it matters if you're telling two different stories that's what matters i i've never been hit or hit anyone with a belt and i remember the last time either one of my children were spanked it was lucy because she clobbered john david in the head with a piece of wood <laughs> She turned around and looked at me and went, is that it, basically? Because I was spanking her through a huge diapy. Okay, it didn't work, so that was the last smack. Um, long story short, there's a whole scenario that I need to talk with uh, Miss Lasky about uh, hitting a child that is autistic with a belt or any child with a belt, for Pete's sake. But that said, concerning me now is two different stories. And as Dave Mack first said, We've got a CPS issue because if you will recall, Dave Mack, in that last sound I played of Mr. Proudfoot speaking to me, I said, how did that turn into a CPS Child Protective Services complaint? And he says, that did not turn into a CPS complaint. But wait a minute. He's told a different story to a different person. Tell me, Dave Mack, and make sure you're right. You cannot go on a Nancy Grace show and log. You can't, because this lady is going to find you, find the truth. And if you lie to her, she'll go for you. She's gunning for you, then. You've got her attention now, Chris. Oh, John. Right. Describing the belt whack. The specific belt whack hit him one time with the belt. And Chris Proudfoot said, Seth, uh, that Sebastian went to school, told a teacher what had happened, and he actually says the school, they're an automatic reporter, and Monday. they reported it. 
to CPS. He went further to say that night when they were sitting down to dinner, a CPS worker came to their house that evening to their house. And by the way, he added, they knew the CPS worker because she had been to the house before. He went on to explain heroically how he didn't get in trouble, but that this caseworker allegedly took Sebastian outside and told him, you can't tell lies about people. You'll get in trouble yourself. So have you ever thought that's probably why he didn't tell his dad what was going on? Because he's reported something to a teacher. The teacher mandated to report it to whoever. They come out, spoke to him and said what they did. And you're thinking, well, what's the point of me telling anyone again? No one believes me. So the story from Chris Proudfoot in this other version is that he spanked Sebastian. Sebastian went to school and told a teacher. Teacher reported it to CPS. CPS came out to their house that night while they're eating dinner and didn't even want to hear Chris Proudfoot's side of the story. He said, I already know what happened and took Sebastian outside and talked to him. The boy needed help and there was nobody helping, apparently. Yeah. There wasn't. Okay, Liz, if you don't mind, could you play 23? for me one more time listen to sebastian's ste uh stepfather Do we have to mr proudfoot was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt yes ma'am the one and only time actually when was this uh years ago ma'am any idea how many any Three, ten, one. Does he look drugged up? She's showing no emotion on her face at all. Nothing. She's like zoned out. Uh, no. <laughs> it, it probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS request, uh, service call. As we go to air right now, we are learning a new search is being conducted by LA law enforcement volunteer. Oh, then we're gonna listen to it. Oh, let's get back to that. Law enforcement. With oh, God. Cajun Navy with Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian. Seth Rogers, you've told me oh, 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 oh. that someone is also trying to sabotage your search for your own son. What's happening? Somebody doesn't want me to find my son. They have been telling there are things that have been coming in off the internet that I need to stop searching for him. I've had people following me around since the, and since I would say day nine. Day Isn't it funny? He's had people following him. Pardon me. Pardon me. He's had people following him around since day eight, maybe nine. When was the search by the law enforcement scaled back? Was it not around about eight, day nine? So it was after the law enforcement scaled back their search, the father and two of his friends continued searching. And that's when he was being followed. Day 10, people have been following me around. Once I started getting volunteers to help me, they started following around my volunteers, trying to be an intimidative factor. And now I found out that not only that, but... They're going back to where we've already flyered and they're taking the flyers down. Okay. I, I don't know what to make of this. Brian Trasher is the vice president of the United Cajun Navy. Okay. And there have been many 
incarnations of the Cajun Navy. But this is what I know. This group is out searching for Sebastian. No, they weren't out searching. They did two searches. One day, they came to do after at 3 p.m. because they hadn't got enough volunteers. Excuse me, whether you had three volunteers, that's three more than what Seth had. You know what I mean? And then they cancelled one because of bad weather. Then they cancelled, uh, they did another search, but didn't finish that one. So in the whole week I was there, they done what? You could say one whole day of searching. They called off part of the search because they perceived threats. Now the bio dad, Seth, is telling me that flyers have been torn down for Sebastian. I, I, I don't understand that. What's happening, Brian? Yeah, I mean, as you heard us say in the past, and you now heard Sebastian's father, Seth, say that there are, without question, people in the local community, uh, whether the locals or not remains to be seen, but there are people there in Sumner County that do not want this boy found, and they want people uh, who are searching for him to stop, and they resorted to threats to try to make them stop. Uh, for Fortunately, it hasn't worked because uh, we still have people out there looking. And I know Seth is not going to stop looking uh, for his son. Guys, take a listen to what Dave Mack from Crime Online has to say. The United Cajun Navy surprised many people that showed up for a recent search in Hendersonville for Sebastian Rogers. Just before people were preparing to gather, the United Cajun Navy came out with a post on Facebook and said they were calling off their search for Sebastian Rogers over security reasons. Press for more details, the United Cajun Navy said they are concerned over the security for their staff and volunteers, as some are getting death threats online and in person. They said they were going to regroup in a few days and decide how best to move forward. Again, no good deed going unpunished. Why would people tear down flyers that have been placed up by Sebastian's father looking for him and the toll free numbers and descriptions of the boy. Why is this happening? And why is the Cajun Navy being threatened? Um, I want to I want to figure out, Brian Trasher, how you picked that particular area to search. It was a combination of some information uh, when we first got there that that Seth provided some areas that he had showed us that had already been searched and areas that he felt uh, would be good to search. Other areas were just kind of triangulating from the last known uh, location uh, of the young man at, at his home um, and trying to figure out some places he would have been easy for him to walk to, places that he frequented before. Um, we knew that there were some places that he liked to visit, um, but uh, from, from what his mother said, he didn't have a history of wandering off without telling anybody. Um, so, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we were, we were searching every nook and cranny that we could uh, to find this boy. What can you tell me about that retention pond? Uh, there were reports a dog had hit on the retention pond. The pond was drained and nothing was found. Do I have that correct? I don't have any information um, with regards to that. I know there's been a lot of confusion about when dogs hit and where and things like that. Um, we go with the information that we have at the time. Uh, my understanding is that that pond was drained and nothing was found there. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. Seth might be able to tell you a little bit more about uh, some of the areas that the dogs searched closer to the home and if there were confirmed hits or not. Welcome back, everybody. Seth Roger joining us. This is Sebastian Rogers, biological father. You can find him at Sebastian Strong. Seth, again, thank you for being with us so much. I mean, when you're searching for a missing child, I like the focus to be on what is being done to find the child. What can we do to help find the child? But instead, there's all this controversy surrounding Hi, the for Sebastian. And I find that very odd that people are not pulling together to try to find Sebastian. But that said, can you please shed some light on the search that occurred 
around the Proudfoot home. Did dogs hit on areas around the home and leading to the retention pond? I was first told by one of the dog handlers that their dog did hit on a scent that took him over into the construction area to a retention pond. I was later told by law enforcement that it was a false hit. I was also informed that they searched that pond where the dog went to and they did not find anything. And I was told that they were going to actually go back and drain the reten that retention pond and they had drained a separate retention pond. With no luck in so finding it. So you think they may have already drained two ponds? Yes, ma'am. The reason I'm asking, Seth, is because your ex, Miss Proudfoot, stated that the dog hit and <laughs> got Sebastian's scent around the home. <laughs> now I'm hearing it didn't. Was that hit at the retention pond, the false hit, or was it around their home? The re I'm being told by law enforcement that the dog hit to the retention pond was a false hit. And that Do the you dog know never of any hit by the dogs around the Proudfoot home <laughs> at all? Not on the outside. Were there not on the outside? So please, God, tell us, how did that lad leave, walk out of that house and not leave a scent? Did he get wings, fly away? Did an alien come over, an alien spaceship come over and zap him up? Please. The police must know all this because... I think what they're doing, they're waiting to get a bit more. Like, they've got enough, uh, they haven't got any, um, what's the name, the evidence they... It's on the inside. What they need is if they haven't got the body, they need someone who will go up against whoever it is, whoever is involved, someone to go up and, and testify against them. And say, look, I know what happened. You know what I mean? I don't, perhaps I don't know where the body is, but I can say, look, I know what happened. Will you testify? I will give you my statement. I will testify. That they can take to court. They've done it with Adam Montgomery. They got his wife at the time, or ex wife now, to testify against him she didn't know where the body was but she knew a lot of information beforehand and that is what got him put away i believe so okay there should have been now this this is my conundrum seth if there are no hits for sebastian outside the proudfoot home that would suggest he did not leave the home. Earlier, I was asking the Proudfoots about their vehicles, what was their make, model, and year to determine if there was a navigation system in those vehicles that could tell me if the vehicles left the home that night. That's what I was getting at. Don't know the answer to that yet, but I believe that there were. You're telling me you... Oh, you will get the answer, Nancy. We know it. You will find the truth out about the phones, whether his car come up to from Mississippi or her car left again that night. You will know. I know you will. You were not told of any canine hit around the home. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's critical. Um, joining me, Dr. Sherry Schwartz, forensic psychologist who specializes in forensic psychology, capital mitigation, and victim advocacy at panthermitigation.com. Dr. Sherry, this search for Sebastian, if he is alive, he could still be saved. But it is degrading into a lot of infighting amongst searchers. I, I don't understand that. 
I don't understand it either. And I certainly am no expert in these kinds of searches, but it doesn't seem to me that I've ever heard of anything so vitriolic in the behavior of people searching to find a missing teenager. Uh, one of the things that seems to be happening is there seems to be maybe a little bit of territory, um, you know, protecting their territory type thing, um, wanting maybe to be the minute, organization. Dr. Sherry, yes. they're out in the middle of the woods. Whose territory is that? Nobody. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%, Nancy. Uh, the thing is, you know, we know now that trolling is a thing. People troll. I don't understand why this situation would attract trolls and for people to make threats when everybody just wants to find this little boy, preferably alive. It seems to me that people should be jumping into hell. So I don't have an explanation for that other than that when they can remain anonymous, relatively anonymous, the trolling seems to increase. But as Brian pointed out earlier, when these people are exposed, all of a sudden they back off because they don't want to be known as trolls. Another question to you, Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's biological father who has been out on foot searching for his son. Seth, did you say you have or have not, would, would not take a polygraph? I would. Wonderful. If I set one up for you, will you take the polygraph? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because you know I will hold this against you if you then don't <laughs> take the polygraph. Yes, right? Ma you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Because I want to know where everybody really was that night. For instance, if Mr. Proudfoot was where he says he is, says he was at work near Memphis, I believe he would have been in his RV. Is that your understanding, mm -hmm. Seth? That would be my understanding. Joining me right now, a special guest, Courtney Lasky, board certified behavior analyst, autism expert, chief clinical officer with Little Starts Therapy Service. Courtney, thank you for being with us. I understand, and of course, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, that Sebastian suffered 6Q27 chromosomal deletion disorder. What is that, and how would that affect? Him being lost right now. Yes. Yeah, so anytime we have a chromosomal deletion syndrome, we can think of it as an umbrella term. Our chromosomes act as codes in our behavior, the way we develop. Um, with his specific deletion of the 6Q27 chromosome, the symptoms related to that, even though it is rare, it does um, associate with intellectual disabilities. So we would see the symptomology of autism spectrum disorders. But sadly, it also is associated with a higher risk of seizures and possible heart defects. Um, it's very, very worrisome that Sebastian might have those symptoms and be gone for so long without medical care. How would that affect him now if he is out there and if he's still alive and lost? Yes, um, he may be struggling with understanding what is happening, what he should do in different circumstances. I am so glad to hear Mr. Rogers saying that he swims like a fish um, because we do know that 91% of autistic children, that is the highest risk of death for them is drowning. Um, it's, it's scary. So we need that, that processing. He has probably a delayed sense of danger and understanding um, what is dangerous in certain circumstances. Guys, I want you to stop for just one moment. You're hearing Courtney Lasky, who's an autism expert. What if, what if he's still alive? What if he's being held against his will? will? What if he's being sex assaulted? Oh, after God, no. Yes, I have, I have a strong hope that he is alive. I have a strong, strong hope that he is um, doing everything he can to process the situation around him. We know that any experience outside of his normal routine is going to be traumatic. I want to go back to Seth Rogers. Seth, I have so many questions for you, but we're running out of our time together for today. But I want to ask you this. 
I was listening to a statement of one of Mr. Proudfoot's wives. I mm -hmm. believe there have been five. I'm not judging. I don't care who marries who or doesn't marry who. But this particular one named Nina stated that they had two children, one she had from a prior relationship, the second she had with him, and that the daughter had braces and he hit the daughter in the mouth and busted her mouth. Guys, remember, Mr. Proudfoot nor the mother have been named a suspect or a POI in this case. My question to you, Seth, I'm sorry, but they should at least, I think they should be named a POI, person of interest. And I think they should be dragged back up to Sumner County. And talk, okay, then they could say, oh, well, we can't go out and search it because the police have got them on house arrest. Did you know about any of that? I mean, she's on tape saying it. I watched her say it. Did you have any idea that there may have been other issues of violence with children? No, ma'am, I didn't. And I know that Chris has been in Sebastian's life for a while now, before me and Katie were divorced. And so I... <sighs> has Sebastian ever said to you or tried to communicate to you abuse in the home? No. He's, he's on multiple occasions sit there and was has told me he doesn't want to go back. And I've asked him, why don't you want to go back? And he won't, he wouldn't tell me. He didn't say why. He was just like, I just, because he knows, he, he just thinks, well, I report he did once and no one believed me. So what, what's the point in telling anyone anymore? I just don't want to go back. And it's, you know, at, at that point in time, I'm, I'm just like, okay, well, maybe it's the freedom that he gets at my house. And he's a teenager. And now I'm finding out a lot of this stuff. And it's, I wish you had told me. Nancy, if I can jump in for just a second, there has just been a post from the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. They want to clarify that those eyeglasses that were found are not, again, are not related to Sebastian Rogers. Guys, won't you help us find Sebastian? 1-800-TBI-FIND. Right. That's the end of the interview, really. Um... But you could see, just saying, after that incident, when he was talking to Nancy Ben, you could see in his face, you know what I mean? It, it's hurting. He's hurting. And it's, it's just got to the point now where I've had, he's had enough. He's had enough of those two going on interview after interview after interview and lying. There's two instances of that belt being used. Right? Two. There's that one where he brought up in the interview the other day with Justin on TikTok. I'll put his link again in the description um, about the C uh, SA. And we know it happened because Katie come on and did this rebuttal sort of thing. He wasn't 13. It's like she was sticking up for this and that. You know what I mean? That's how I felt when I read that. When I first read that, I thought he wasn't 13. Uh, 13 right? And we didn't let him abuse our son. Well, I don't how yeah, old it was, but you let it happen in your house because you wasn't keeping an eye on your son. If you could be, if he'd been in like a room where you was or where you could see him from the kitchen or something like that, that wouldn't have happened. But it was obviously in another room, right, where you couldn't see him. 
And because you can see him, this older lad did what he did. And I think it's disgusting. And for you two to say, come out and say, he wasn't there. I don't give two facts. I have to say that word because if I say the word I want to say, it, I won't. I'll probably get kicked off YouTube permanently. Right, so he's had enough. The grandmother knows a lot more because Sebastian has told her and he's told her to keep it secret. So even telling his grandmother to say, don't tell anyone, please don't tell anyone else, don't tell my dad, you know what I mean? He hasn't. She's kept a promise to him and not said nothing to her dad. But I think in cases like that, she should have said, Sebastian, your dad needs to know about this. We'll tell him together, you know what I mean? She shouldn't have agreed, she shouldn't have swore a secret to me. She should have said, Sebastian, that it, your dad needs to know this. Because you're, you're leaving this. And to be honest with you, I've been on this case now since he went missing on the 26th. He was reported missing on the 26th. I heard about this on the 27th. So I've been doing lives now, literally nightly, every night on this lad since the 28th of February. Right? And... I know quite a lot about this case, but there's things coming out now that I never thought of, never thought of was happening or happened. This poor lad has suffered for years. You know what I mean? And then when you just speak out about someone at school, the DCFS worker, and it is true. If this is true that the DCFS worker or whoever they call them over there came out and said that to him, then she should be sacked. Period. Because she's put the fear of God in him. And that's why he wouldn't tell his dad. Because no, he, he just felt no one believed him. He had no one to turn to. So, it's so sad. It's so sad. I hope and pray he is alive. I hope they have just hit him. But why hide him? I don't understand why they would hide him. Because he was going to live with his dad at the end of May. Right? It was all set up for him. To go there. When they broke up for the summer break, and then after the summer break, he'd be starting a school down there. It was all set up. His dad said the other night, had his people, uh, relatives or whatever, said, you need to clean your house up. He said, you can't go in Sebastian's room. You can't go in there because Sebastian's not there. He won't clean up the table in the living room because it's got all his magician's cards out there. You know what I mean? He keeps the kitchen clean, but everything else is just left. It's like time stopped. When he was, when he found out his son was missing, time stopped for this father. You know what I mean? And he just wants answers you now. He wants his son back. And if someone is hiding him, then just drop him off somewhere. Phone up. Give him an anonymous phone call. You know what I mean? You don't have to give him your name. You can phone up anonymously. You can put anonymous tips in. So they can just leave him somewhere. And the phone up and say, Sebastian is at this place. And just tell Sebastian to stay there 
and someone will come out for him. And then all they've got to do, once he's dropped him off or whoever drops him off, once they've told Sebastian, just go here, someone will come and get you. They drive off, make that phone call, and I can guarantee you, depending on where it is, you think 10 minutes maybe, 10, 15 minutes, there'll be someone there picking him up. Drop him off at a petrol st a gas station, like his father said. Tell him to go in and tell him to tell him. Tell him to tell him his name and to phone 911. But unless he was carried out of that house, there's no way he walked out of that house, I'm sorry to say. There isn't. There's no way. There's too much going on. And for dogs, and this guy who I was listening to today said, if they're good scent dogs and cadaver dogs, they don't lose the scent. They keep on that scent. And they can track a scent like seven days old. As long as it hasn't rained, they can track a scent up to seven to ten days old. But there's no scent outside the house. So who put the rubbish out on the Sunday night then? Because his scent would be there. Right? But there's no scent. And I'm sorry, but I think the police are just holding everything very close to the chest, which I can understand. I can fully understand that. They don't want to alert the parents. If it is the parents or whoever has took Sebastian, they don't want to alert them. But I hope and pray every day I get up. And so I get up and make myself my coffee, whatever, sort my cats out. And then I log in on my phone. I go on YouTube on my phone, not on my laptop, on my phone, just to check. Or I put it on my TV. Just to see if there's some, if he's been found alive. I just so want him found alive because I want him to come back home to his dad. But this, if he's found alive, this child is going to need so much help when they get him home. So much help. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that everyone and I'd just like to say thank you all for being here and in chat and please if you like what you see hit the give me a like I say subscribe that way you won't you will kept up to date with all future lives all future lives Right, and um, if you're on Twitter, come and join us on YouTube. Join in with the chat. I know there's been some people here on YouTube that have been sitting in the bushes. But it's nice to see you all. So thank you very much. Thank you for being here with me tonight. And I'll see you all again soon. Good night.